least. I've been here for a while. I uh, actually, in fact, I just got my 35-year pin from Siemens, so uh, that, that, that tells you a little bit about history. But uh, I did come to Siemens via acquisition, so I, I really can't say, you know, I've been inside Siemens all those times. Some of those times I was competing with Siemens. So uh, I have an interesting perspective. Uh, I actually got to Siemens through the acquisition of uh, their product lifecycle management software. So I actually came in through digital manufacturing. But my history was from a company that they had brought in, which was how to tie it to the shop floor, it was why they had acquired us earlier, a company called US Data, and one of the early leaders in the uh, HMI and SCADA space. In fact, uh, I, I introduced my first uh, configurable HMI, which is sort of like the modern panel products today in 1978. So a little bit of history there uh, and where we come from and, and the perspectives that I have, I think. Uh, oh, clicker. Now, let's see. And uh, so one of the questions, and I know that certainly you, you probably heard the name Siemens a few times if you, you know, lately. So if you, you know, listen to the president recently, uh, he mentioned the name a couple of times. But still, I, I think there really is in this audience probably a fair number of people really don't know who Siemens are. You know, who are we? You know, what do we do? You know, and again, some people think, oh, you're the people that make healthcare stuff. Uh, you're the people that make trains or, <laughs> and again, it depends on what your perspective is. So uh, one of the things I used here is this vehicle, which is, a, a, I thought, a great model, the, uh, the collaborative management model from uh, ARC. And I, I believe that this model uh, gives an idea of, and it's a good way to think of who Siemens is, is that we really do operate on two different axes in this model. And um, we actually do a lot about collaboration. And we have products that fit along these axes. Uh, probably the, the, like I said, the most complete sets, I think, in the product lifecycle management, which is from conceiving of a product to the point of actually trying to maintain it and retire it at some point, and all the tools in between from simulation tools, and you'll see all these things. That was in our Siemens PLM area. And, but that's all about collaboration, how to get people to move data back and forth, uh, work together, and to be more efficient in those operations. And likewise, we have in the automation axes. Uh, a set of products that go from the very, very bottom and, you know, we make motors and <laughs> we make uh, all sorts of devices that actually are in the manufacturing, uh, hard, you know, machines. <laughs> but then we also uh, produce very high-level systems as well. So really, uh, one of the, if you look at it from a Siemens perspective, uh, well, uh, oops, did I skip a slide? Oh, well, I'll get to it next. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't know my own presentation. Um, coming back, I guess, to the, uh, to what do we do with OPC and how does this relate to OPC? And, uh, and, 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 and what does Siemens uh, do in this area is that we actually are a, a founding member, as I think Tom pointed out. Uh, we, back from 896, uh, we had our first OPC products in uh, 98. Uh, we, uh, you know, XML, uh, the uh, various other, you know, introductions, certification. Uh, in fact, as you can see, in 2004, we had over 50 products. And this is classes of products, not just, you know, uh, with OPC in it. And uh, up to, if we keep moving up, some of the things we've done up to today, we actually have uh, right now over 10 products that are actually delivering OPC UA. And, and again, I classes of products, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, here I want to talk a little bit about, again, back to Siemens a little bit. Uh, and our problem is a lot like your problem is in the factory floor and you as a, an end user uh, out there. You're trying to integrate all these different product classes. Uh, and uh, if you look at it as a Siemens, meaning that we have products in all these classes, uh, we have the same issue. And, and also in terms of delivering our products to a way because, yeah, we do really have a lot of products and uh, we believe that you can really get a lot of the content that you need in a manufacturing uh, requirements from Siemens as a single supplier. But on the other hand, uh, I, I've been around the automation industry long enough to know that the diversity of applications, the diversity of needs out there, uh, we, we cannot possibly supply everything you need. So there's always the need to integrate something else in. Now, to cost to us is, as a Siemens, uh, is how do I myself supply to you some way to bring something in that's not Siemens? And if I've got to do different 
standards, uh, different interfaces at all these different levels, that's a cost to me. So my, in one sense, my cost of integration and maintaining that integration is very similar to our customers. So let's talk a little bit about just some of these areas. Uh, we, uh, right now, I would say we're, we're a little still a little light on the uh, embedded. We are actually providing embedded devices that go out there on the shop floor uh, and out in the field area that uh, actually do provide embedded controllers. They're post mostly PC based, as I think some of our uh, characterize. So it's, it is fairly big, but then we have very, what we call the, little, the, the micro PCs and so forth that actually embed those and allow you to take them out there. But we do actually have a lot of work going on today, and I can't talk to in detail, but you can see just some of the areas in terms of actually planning on bringing OPC and OPC UA into uh, like numeric uh, control, motion control, uh, the uh, drive management, uh, uh, diagnostics, uh, you know, we can look at the uh, uh, industrial network management, which again, we have a whole family of network management and networking products for industrial networking. Uh, we also have uh, analytic devices, and there we're looking at the, some of the companion standards, such as the uh, analysis uh, devices and uh, the analyzer device uh, interface uh, companion standard that's part of the OPC uh, UA extensions. And again, there's the other extensions that we're looking at and use, you know, utilizing those. And in fact, uh, as we go move up the stack, you can see that uh, at the control level, uh, we have the uh, UA in, since 2008, uh, in our, uh, both our Simotion as well as the, uh, in the, uh, uh, our servers that uh, provide direct connectivity to the PLCs and the networks of PLCs. And uh, again, there's just a host of products that actually include those technologies. And so again, there we can look at uh, some of our things like, uh, for instance, we have a, an embedded uh, PC-based control, which is our WinCC, our WinAC products, which is actually, again, as I think the, the Beckhoff uh, presentation talking about how you're doing uh, real-time control in, in the PC systems, but also our uh, standard uh, S7 series PLCs, uh, the uh, Simotion I mentioned earlier. Uh, also, we have a product called Synmeric, which is uh, CNC control, so uh, for putting controllers in front of CNC devices. And then, uh, you know, just uh, the panels and this t typical HMI, and we had a whole family of those. Uh, moving up to the next level, of course, we've got a very rich uh, both DCS and SCADA offerings. Uh, there we have both the process and the discrete industries with our, uh, looking at our, um, uh, uh, our, uh, uh, well, the products you can see, you know, I, I think I'm signaled here, I need to move a little bit faster. <laughs> so I, think, I think I'm about, so I'll try to speed up here a little bit and not do such detail. But we do have the, um, again, a whole host of products there. Again, everything from network management uh, to the, uh, like I said, the SCADA products, or we have actually three SCADA systems. Uh, one of those is on Linux. Uh, so we actually have OPC UA on Linux today and those offerings. Uh, again, we have our, uh, our, our somatic WinCC class, and there's a whole class of SCADA that goes from low-end SCADA to high-end SCADA uh, that we offer, and we have uh, UA support in those as well today. And, uh, and again, just a, another, uh, the network management with the, um, uh, which is, uh, you're, you're very interested in at that level. And then as we move up to the MES level, we have our somatic IT, and there we have UA in that today. Uh, again, we're beginning to add UA in more areas. Again, as you start looking at the higher end of the stack, the number of functionalities that you can do goes up. And so the number of interfaces and the type of data that can be uh, transmitted. So here again, we're looking at some of these companion standards. Uh, Again, there we're looking at, I think, uh, later on there's going to be uh, talking, a talk from the ISA 95 and the B to MML where we're talking about uh, primarily interaction from the uh, enterprise up and, 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 and from the uh, MES systems down uh, at that level. And then we're looking at higher end semantics and again, a lot of the uh, companion work that I know that uh, the OPC uh, Foundation is doing with these other standards organizations and we will be incorporating those into our work. So, so again, um, uh, we really do see this, and I, I said this earlier, that this openness, and then you tie that into a system that really, if you look at integration, it's, it, it really is an evil that you really want to avoid. <laughs> you know, it's cost, and I've got desperate systems, and so I, I really want to minimize integration, but 
also, if, you know, where I really have to, and as I pointed out, I believe you do, uh, there's no way that any one vendor is going to supply everything you need in your manufacturing processes, and I'd love to think that Siemens could do that, but I, I don't think that we're going to achieve that in our li my lifetime. But um, you're, you're going to need to integrate. And so the goal is to reduce that cost, and of course, obviously, being able to manage that with one standard like the OPC, and specifically OPC UA, which has lots of benefits. Uh, there, uh, we, we, we think that, uh, you know, the, the value is huge. Now, some, some of the benefits, uh, let's just think about those. Uh, again, just uh, as I pointed out, this uh, cross automation, you know, standard, which again is, as I pointed out, a great benefit to me as well as to you. Uh, the independence from the vendor. Now, again, those that have you've lived with that, that's really a, a knock at Microsoft. But, you know, hey, uh, you know, it's, uh, we were at their mercy in terms of how OPC uh, and it built upon the DCOM and COM and some of the technical issues there. And there were a lot of issues, and I think those of you that lived through that understand what I mean by that. But, but again, it, it, it left us at, at their mercy, in a sense. And where we now have an abstraction layer that's above them, uh, away from them, and we can manage it and provide these consistent interfaces. And we can do this across platforms, too. And so this uh, flexibility to, to, to go to, like, Linux and so forth. Um, and then, of course, uh, certification and manageability, and then, of course, uh, things like uh, redundancy, which is important to our industry, uh, these extensions and uh, standardization, uh, you know, uh, of models on top of that that we're doing with these companion standards that I've already uh, mentioned. Um, I mentioned that it has a benefit for me and you, and, and I mentioned that some of you may not be too familiar with Siemens, so I know that some of you out there, uh, you know, really, are, you know, maybe haven't used any Siemens products. That's sort of almost inconceivable, but, you know, but uh, OPC allows you to basically take these and just put them in a point solution uh, and uh, allow you to use uh, and try, start, start trying some Siemens products in a way that's, you know, more tactical or, uh, and, and to get a feel for how these products actually perform. And, uh, and some of the benefits, uh, it allows, again, customers that really want to produce sort of a breast of breed uh, solution across the different stack levels to pick the solution they think best fits them and, 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 and put those junctures where it makes sense for you as a, as a business. Uh, and then, of course, for uh, people that are using uh, really our TIA, our totally integrated automation strategy, which really are a strategic partner of Siemens and using us pretty much top to bottom, it allows you to put in something out there that's, you know, in a tactical solution from a, a point solution. So I, I think that the, that the benefits, if I look at this from, a, from a, uh, just a, an overall perspective, it really does provide a lot of flexibility, and, and, and we need that in manufacturing. Uh, it lets you, uh, again, one of the things that we're doing, uh, we're very deep in terms of what we're doing. One of the things that we've done is some performance standards um, that where we've actually gone out there and measured and provided some stats and allow you to go out there and sort of get a feel for how uh, OPC performs. And how does that affect, for instance, uh, you know, the, uh, in fact, when you're tying it into a PLC, how does that, how does that affect the actual control loop, uh, let's say in a WinAC where you've got a PC-based control and you're out there doing uh, uh, OPC interactions with that. And so we're actually not just measuring the performance of the OPC, but its impact on the control below it and allowing you to have tools that would let you go out there and decide how to scale this system. Um, again, I'll mention some of the others already. So uh, just in summary, uh, you know, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, a wide offering of products that we've been providing, but we've been doing this since, uh, like I said, our first product in 98, our first UA in uh, 2008. So again, a, a long, deep history with OPC. Um, we're an active member. We're on the board of directors. Uh, you know, uh, we uh, uh, also uh, head up several of the advisory councils, I think, and involved there. And then, of course, the marketing and other activities like like this one. <laughs> so uh, support and very strong supporters and believers in, uh, in the OPC Foundation. And then, of course, uh, uh, as I mentioned, we see, uh, you know, many benefits. And a lot of these are already being seen. Uh, and uh, again, just the uh, range, uh, you know, I, I've mentioned earlier and to us that breadth of range is, is the big issue for us is that it's one item. Uh, and if you kind of look at, in my mind, what the, what the, what the PLC did, really, for automation, it was like one tool that could be used broadly in many, many ways. And if you, if you think of what that did in a dis, as a disruptive technology, if you're familiar with that idea, here's an idea that comes in, totally changes industries. Um, 
and the microprocessor is done, and of course, as we start thinking of the, the internet, well, in a sense, I, I think of OPC as a disruptive technology, meaning that it's going to change the way we do business and the benefits associated with that, and those that actually adopt it will actually see, I think, business benefits over their competitors, uh, meaning that it will actually turn into business results. So again, I, I think, as, as I pointed out, that, that we're, we're doing it today. Uh, it's, it's not something planned, it's, uh, it's actively doing it, and we're putting more of it every day into our products. So thank you for your time.